Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Has my healthy uh, keto Taco Bell. Taco Bell is keto. I don't count the shell. It's just like this dry, it's, it's practically paper. That should not count as bread or, or pasta or whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, I had a really good video yesterday. Kind of tucked myself out with it. I got very emotional. And I'm back. I'm back, baby. Uh, so we got here the Unstoppable Wasp number two. And you go, wait, what? Two? Haven't you done like 10 videos on this series in the last year? Shouldn't it be 12? Uh, no, I'm sorry. You're confused. You think Marvel Comics is still a company. <laughs> You didn't know. It's pure propaganda. Uh, so, uh, The Unstoppable Wasp was started, uh, I don't know, a year and change ago. It was it was the baby of Alana Smith and uh, Tom Brevoort, Paging Human Resources. Um, and uh, uh, they were very, very excited about it. Unlike anyone who ever read it because it was absolutely terrible. The Unstoppable Wasp is the epitome of the I love the science meme in culture right now for people who have regular lives and do normal things and you're not on Twitter and Facebook all the time. Um, so I love the science kind of popped up, I'd say in the last year. I think the real progenitor of it was a Facebook group called, I think it's called like I effing love science. And it's basically science for thoughts. It's like, here's a picture of an asteroid. How is, what, what, are you, photography? Are you, which part of this is science? Just a thing isn't science. Um, uh, you know, kind of Big Bang Theory. It's, it's just uh, pretending. Um, because uh, as I showed in the previous issue, it's not about actual science, which is very, very hard and uh, is very demanding and not glamorous at all. This is the science. And the science is something about it's about your ego. It's about, it's something to be congratulated for. And we're going to see that very literally uh, in this. So we start off and just like, God, this, this, this might be the most SJW cover ever. Because it is literally the main character being emotionally validated. That's it. There's no twist. There's no drama. There's no conflict. There's no escalation. Oh my God. She's amazing. She's like, I am. They all know. And she's like, this girl is amazing. Just call the book, This Girl is Amazing. Uh, hashtag, how about call it Girls Are Amazing? Um, and uh, so, oh, so my point about the, the numbers is it was canceled for low sales and it was bought, bought brought back uh, because of politics, <laughs> because of the political embarrassment of having their rancid, terrible SJW propaganda books canceled. So in the first issue, uh, everything went right, um, but there was a little... <gasps> There was a science fair, and she hadn't invented anything in two weeks, and she needed to invent something. <sighs> okay, so it was a real big deal that they were having a science fair, and they acted like they invented that concept. Second of all, you could just show the thing you, you invented two weeks ago. You apparently invent stuff constantly, so just show all your stuff from the last year. It's the first science fair, assuming it's going to be annual. Show whatever you got right now, and a year from now, show the stuff you did in between. Um, but uh, in the second issue, they completely forget about that, even though they mentioned that in the uh, uh, introduction. And it's 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 literally 20 pages of LOL, uh, so random humor and uh, emotional validation. So we start off, we're here in PIM Labs, and it's Jeremy Whitley, man. Like, okay, so, like I said, I don't, I try never to, to talk about people's families. Uh, I'll just say that Jeremy Whitley is a parent. Um, uh, so, uh, a lot of these times, these SJWs, they write about kids, and they do a really bad job. Uh, and you're like, well, they, they're like in their 50s and they never had kids. But um, 
this one's just weird. So he did this thing, and again, it's the same. It's the same problem of uh, the the phantom audience. This is made for eight year olds, but eight year olds don't like stuff like this. Eight year olds, you know, girls like stuff like Ever After High or you know, uh, the Land of Stories novels, like, and those are filled with conflict and drama and escalation. They're classically, you know, you know, classic storytelling. Um, so last issue, he did this weird thing where he wanted to talk about, I think it was momentum or velocity. So he did this really, really detailed description of uh, drifting. <laughs> Remember when drifting was hot like 15 years ago? Okay, so even if it was 15 years ago, that would still be weird because eight-year-old girls are not into drifting. Drifting is when you car kind of slides as you're going. Uh, and this one is about like, oh my God, like coffee. Am I right? Uh, and it, it takes like an entire page just to build to that. Like, uh, I'm like, stay away from me before I have my first cup. Um, so these two pages are essentially wasted. Then we get an actually pretty good scene. Um, uh, it's uh, Bobby Morris, Mockingbird. Why is Mockingbird in this? Oh, gosh. That's, there's, there's just layers of inside baseball because there was an SJW run of Mockingbird that was also canceled for low sale. Why does that keep happening? Why, when you focus on a phantom audience does not exist, do your books not sell and then they get canceled? I mean, I can only assume the patriarchy. Is, is somehow behind it. Um, so uh, then we get to... Uh, um, uh, so so uh, SJW Marvel can never admit defeat. They just take their failures and move them somewhere else. <laughs> like like pedophile priests in 1980s. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was a war zone. I was an altar boy. Yeah. Yeah, you had to watch out. And you they, they, uh, yeah, th- those stories are true. When the priests was caught they wouldn't send him to jail like you were always just getting the new priest and everyone's like we got a new priest you're like why why because people kind of by the late by the mid 80s people were kind of catching up on to that thing um so uh they have a scene where they're fighting but they're also brainstorming how to work their way through uh she's she's hit a sticking point in her developing process. And Mockingbird basically used their fighting styles as an analogy and it helps her have a breakthrough. This is actually quite good. Um, Although it got a little bit too, like, I don't know, it wasn't, it's definitely not for eight-year-olds. This is more for older kids. But the the idea is that there's a connection between this fighting style and, and the vulnerabilities and, you know, the idea of how to kill these cancer cells, it, it was good. It was actually quite good. Um, but then we just got back to here. All the women like each other. We're all friends. We never have. You want to talk about real science fiction? A bunch of women hanging out all the time and never having any personality conflicts. They all love each other. They all like each other. They're all friends instantly. They all have essentially the same personality. Um uh, so, uh, then it's kind of weird because, I don't know, it's just like, haha, her shoes are little bees. Um, so it's like, wait, I don't know. So, so then it becomes a champion story, even though this is, God, so stupid. This is a team book, but it's not a champion's book. It's called Girl, Girls in Action Research Lab. Yes, I know that should be G-I-A-R-L, nothing matters. Um, but then they go, uh, there's a... People are, are striking against teach. They don't want to pay teachers in Durham, North Carolina. This, this is a very specific thing. And then there's a bull. You guys get it? That's corporate Wall Street. And then uh, she tackles it. And then she ends up in a china shop. And she gets a actually fairly serious laceration. Which was weird because her armor has protection on the forearm. And... They just kind of stood there and watched it happen. 
but they all they all look like they're, they're clasping hands here, they're hugging here. It is constant. Oh, this is the one I'm talking about. So then, ha ha, she's silly, silly. She's tired, sees, and she's got beastie shoes. So, hey, Bunsen beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks in them, right? That's the science. I saw it. I saw it on Beekman's World. That's the science. Um, hey, they got the science right there. They actually do love the science because it's right there in the room that they're in. Um, God, it's so politically correct. She literally has braces on. Um, uh, everyone but the lead is is uh, a minority. Uh, half of them are lesbians. And one of them is handicapped and walks around with braces on. Like, come on. None of them can have a floating wheelchair? Come on. Burger King's Kids Club, get on it. Um, oh, I forgot she's got a cutesy bootsy widow. Band-Aidsies on her face. But doesn't her... It's not the part of her face covered with the... Oh. Why am I thinking about this? Why am I caring about this? You're not supposed to care. Uh, so then she's like... Uh, Priya, why don't you show me what you're working on? Yeah, sure, okay. It's been observed in the wild that acacia trees can communicate chemically to help one another survive. They change their chemical makeup in response to these messages. I'm hoping to isolate this gene to allow us to send our own messages, perhaps even breed smarter, more robust crops. And then this, this always happens. So we see why they pretend to wub the science. By the way, how come all the people always talking about wub the science aren't scientists? Why? 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 Nadia, what? You don't think it's good? I knew it wasn't. No, 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 don't worry. You're going to be emotionally invalidated. Even though you haven't even finished. All you said is your study. You just set up, like, the, the reason for the trials. And you said you're just hoping. You haven't even started. You're like, I know I haven't had any conclusions or any breakthroughs, but I'm really hoping you can front me some emotional validation oh my god you're not as terrible she's like it's brilliant priya priya i need to get to work what's brilliant you just stated something that had been discovered before and then you said you hope to do something oh hey she's got a book with a leaf in it she's on the way uh so then silly billy time do you remember when she was sweep season it was funny right here she was sweeping on a widow, stuffed alligator. Now she's fell off in a chair because she was sciencing too hard. Oh, she's drooling and one eye is closed. That's so silly. All of these were probably her sciences that weren't sciency enough. So then uh, she's like, hey, don't you remember the thing we had to go to? And I go, oh, is it the, is it the science fair? Because that was like the big deal from last issue. So this is one of those like slice of life uh, issues, which is fine. That's a, that's a standard. But what you usually do is you do that at the end of a big storyline, you know, like a big dramatic storyline in X-Men would always be followed by a freaking, uh, issue where they were playing softball. <laughs> like you always knew when a bunch of people had died, it meant in the previous next issue, they were going to be playing softball. Um, so then she's like, uh, I'm your fairy godmother. And it's like, oh, no, I'm your stepmom. It's like, no, no, you're not related to this girl at all. She's the daughter of your dead, abusive ex-husband and his first wife, who is also dead. You two are strangers. Um, so then she's like, hey, we're going to go on the thing. She's like, yay, yeez. So they're, have, they're going out to... I don't, I don't know why do SJWs think this is so funny for people to talk in this like almost like pseudo autistic, like imitation autistic way. I want to wear this dress in Bobby's car with the top down. There would be ruffles everywhere. Okay, so are you new to this country or a space alien? Why do you talk like you're faking every human emotion you're having? So they're going, uh, they're going out to, she's making manga faces all the time. And they go to, uh, Bonjour, Mademoiselle, Chateau, Mademoiselle, Janet, are we eating at a fancy French restaurant? Are you in this story or not? <laughs> what? 
You grew up in the Red Room, a training room for assassins. Every day you should wake up screaming from all the psychological torture you went through through your entire childhood. Also, you wouldn't be impressed with stuff. You would probably have been trained to go like to places like this. And so, and then even later, she shows off some really like rudimentary French. Listen, listen how this is talking. Bonjour, Janet. Bonjour, Gabriel. Nadia, this is my friend, Gabriel Duquesne. This is his restaurant. Bonjour, Monsieur. C'est un honneur de vous rencontrer. Uh, you didn't say she spoke French. How lovely to see a young woman so cute and so intelligent. Perhaps you should meet my son. Shut the fuck up about your son! You aren't even beginning to emotionally valid. Don't just say she's cute and intelligent. You need to keep going. The emotional validation needs to keep going. You just, you, you just patriarchally turned it to your son for no reason. Do you understand? This entire book revolves around the hyper misogynistic theory that females are baby brained morons in need of constant emotional validation. And I mean constant. So uh, then the weird thing is they almost talk about something that could be character development, could be a story, and it's absolutely necessary, is that uh, apparently uh, Nadia is in therapy, to which the maternal figure slash friend, yeah, that's good. Yeah, just go be a friend with, yeah, yeah that's going to work out great. So tell me about your day. How was therapy? I didn't make it. Uh, what does she say? He's like, can we talk about anything else? Yeah, sure, kid. Tell me what. No. No. No, we're not going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about why you didn't go to therapy. Because you really, really need it. You talk like a space alien, and you were raised as a child soldier. You are effed up. You don't remotely know how to be normal. So you need to go to therapy, and you need to talk about how it's going. To see if you found a good match for the therapist. And then uh, Ghostbusters happens. And then they start sciencing. The same thing that's always made ant men and wasps hard to deal with. We exert a large force in a very small space. That's science. So then uh, they go to, uh, they dress up like um, punk rockers. Punk rock! And then they hang out with their friends who are hugging them. And emotionally validating them. And then in classic SJW fashion, guess what they love? Professional wrestling. NPC update. Oh, I don't know. 2016? Uh, suddenly, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Every SJW loves professional wrestling. And I mean every single one. Which means they've heard of it. When an SJW says they love something, it means they've heard of it. And they all love it. Um... So then they got uh, shirts because she's fun mom. And, okay, so... They're doing, like, a bit where they're, they're fighting scrolls. Let's go, crew. Destroy the scroll empire. And then guess what Nadia says? You're just gonna... Your heart's gonna grow three sizes because it's so damn delightful. She says, do good wrestling. Get it? Because she doesn't know how to talk like... A human being because she's written by an SJW and they also don't know how to talk like human beings so then the man oh of course that's a woman uh, the man oh that's a woman the uh, the man oh that's a woman oh, they, they, they win they're in a uh, wrestling league where women fight men and then the women beat them so then we get a uh, yeah, and uh, she's a science. She loves the science in real life. She's a science. And then they say, why do you think it's important, important to encourage young women to develop an interest in STEM? The universe is a complicated place, true, but it has so much to offer, true. Is this a greeting card? Every brain brings unique gifts of insight. Uh, true, but I don't know if scientifically important insight and every heart brings a unique story to the task of understanding what exists and what is possible. This is definitely a greeting card. 
this, 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 okay. For too long, young women were discouraged from exploring possible in STEM fields, and the world has been poorer for it. Uh, that's, this is not a science. Um, for too long, okay, so probably, you know, realistically, from the, the beginning of human civilization till 40 years ago, uh, but, yeah, um, the barriers for women entering STEM fields need to fall. They did. They, they fell like, they fell like 40 years ago. You're a scientist. You're supposed to be about expanding knowledge and knowledge obviously is truth. It's like when Arthur asked Merlin what the most important quality of a knight is. And he said, well, first, first he turned to not answer, which was a little weird. I'm not sure. And then he said truth. Like, you're trying to prove things that are true or, or see if ideas are false. Um, you're dissembling. You're talking around the truth and you know it. That's why you have to get super vague. Uh, a lot of, all of this stuff is very, very specific with uh, dates and times and cultural. But then when you get into this is, uh, uh, and while we encourage young women to explore the opportunities, we must all work toward a world where they will be welcomed warmly and valued richly. Okay, that's not science. That's, you describe what happens in this book, but there's no reason, and in fact, people should not be welcomed warmly in scientific pursuits. It's very rigorous. It's very harsh. It is not glamorous. It is not fun. It's, oh, I mean, occasionally it's fun. You're describing this book, Constant Emotional Validation and Everyone Qualifies, but it's not true. Everyone should be encouraged to see if they have an interest in science. And then if you have an interest in science, See if you have an aptitude for it. Uh, but this constant, like, basically brainwashing, just love the science, love it, love it. Why, why, why? It's weird. Um, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately I showed every single page, which means I have to edit out some of my, uh, the gems, the rubies that have spilled from my mouth. But uh, this is trash. This is... Uh, well, today it's going to be some Taco Bell trash. Uh, but more specifically, uh, stop with the hypermisogyny. Uh, stop writing the world people as you wish they were, not as they are. Like, stop. This doesn't come off as you respecting women. This comes off as being afraid of them and looking down on them. Bubble-brained nitwits who have one personality shared among them um, who need constant, constant emotional validation. That's not just misogyny. That's hyper-misogyny. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone getting to the Patreon. Go find me in the Indiegogo. And I'll have more uh, new comic reviews up later today. Thanks. Bye.